It's a Friday, March 11th, and the time for your Bobby this today morning news update. Bobby this and to the rest of the region are being warned that another global recession could be on the horizon. It's coming from management consultant at Celadon Petroleum Associates Limited, Bashir Badwadi, as sanctions are stacked against Russia. Oil, food, and other commodity prices continue to increase, and global supply chains experience delays. He pointed to these far reaching impacts of Russia's invasion of Ukraine as he addressed the Sir Arthur Lewis Institute of Social and Economic Studies Vice Chancellor Forum on the topic of Ukraine oil on Thursday. This is going to increase the cost of imports. Um, Notwithstanding just oil and gas and petrol and diesel, the knock-on effects that it will have on food production and so forth. And this is not just only here in the Caribbean, but this is a global issue. And we are concerned about the inflationary pressure that this is causing. And as I mentioned earlier, we're looking very closely at the next two quarters to see whether we have a global recession like we did back in 2008. Money markets themselves will be affected by what is going on. The, the lack of investment in the oil industry that has happened since 2014 is starting to show. Um, the issue of Saudi and uh, Abu Dhabi increasing their production um, as swing producers um, is possible, but due to lack of investment over the years, it's highly unlikely that it's going to make any dent in replacing Russian oil. This is all going to lead to increasing oil products, uh, oil prices, and increasing products, so it's going to be much more expensive to fill your car up, uh, with petrol or diesel, um, and then the knock-on effect on transport of goods and of food and etc. etc. As meantime, professor of practice at the Arthur Lewis Institute of Social and Economic Studies at the Mona Campus, Ambassador Dr. Richard Bernal cautioned the tourism-dependent destinations to expect a disruption in the re-emergence of the sector. There is going to inevitably be an increase in public debt across the world, including many developing countries which are already highly indebted. This will require new multilateral initiatives to reverse and to handle this situation. International reserves, even where they are adequate, are going to have to be drawn down in the short run. We're seeing a new development in the corporate suspension of operations. BP, Shell, and Exxon have all withdrawn from their operations in Russia. Supply disruptions are also inevitable because some of the traditional routes, land and sea, are going to be compromised and that will create delays and price increases. And finally, for the Caribbean, airfares and shipping costs are inevitably going to go up and that will affect the nascent recovery of tourism. The Ministry of Education has been commended for its decision to resume face-to-face -face classes. UNICEF's representative for the Caribbean Area Office, Dr. Alois Kamaraji, said he was happy that school doors reopened on February 21st. He said while some countries are yet to follow suit, too many children, due to their social and economic backgrounds, have not benefited from online learning and are now behind in their academic studies. They were not learning, and I do hope that the education system in Barbados will ensure that those children who didn't learn during all that period have an opportunity to catch up, remedial, remedial learning, to catch up on the lost learning. Of course, for UNICEF and USAID, it was really the minimum to ensure that we can support Barbados in ensuring that there is a conducive and enabling environment 
because of course we have been advocating for schools reopening face to face, but in a safe environment, in a safe environment. And I'm so happy to see that across Barbados, all the schools have put in place the measures to ensure that children are safe. The Queen Elizabeth Hospital has received $30,000 worth of equipment for its laundry and linen department. The donation has come from Cooperators General Insurance. During an official handing over ceremony on Thursday, General Manager Anton Lovell said the insurance company was constantly looking at ways to help the hospital improve its daily operations. We were indeed happy to help and do hope that the equipment installed, I'm glad to hear, will make the laundry staff more, more uh, work easier and allow for increased productivity. We are calling, just like the minister, we are calling on companies and even individuals who cannot afford to reach out to the QEH and grant some level of assistance, financial or otherwise. The QEH's Chief Operations Officer, Dr. Christine Greenwich, said that the contribution will go a long way in helping the department improve services provided to patients. Our Department of Linen and Laundry Services is one of the most critical departments in any hospital. Because of the demand for linen on a constant basis, and more so in meeting the needs of ensuring that our patients are comfortable as well as the preservation of their dignity and privacy. That's what a linen does. That's what a sheet does for our patients. And so the timeliness of this donation is something that I would like to share in one brief moment. Currently, our Department of Laundry and Linen is going through a resizing in terms of the par stocks of linen on our wards. And that's because we want to make sure that the numbers of linen being distributed on a daily basis is meeting the demands based around that patient-centered focus of being comfortable, but also in being protected in terms of their privacy, and dignity. There's regional and international news after this short break. New Brunswick sardine fillets, boneless, ready to eat. Perfection. Hold on, hold on, one more. It is sardine. Well, let's see. And available in bold new flavors. Brunswick sardine fillets are giving sardines a new vibe. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity, and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure oxygen. Nature's ultimate water. To developments in the region, no one must be left behind as countries continue the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Director of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Carissia Etienne, made that position clear in an update on the virus in Latin America and the Caribbean. We've seen existing inequities exacerbated by COVID-19 and new inequities emerge, including in vaccine access. In Latin America and the Caribbean, about 248 million people have yet to receive their first dose of the vaccine. And these gaps are concentrated in harder to reach rural areas or underserved areas. Only 14 countries achieved coverage of 70% of their populations with completed vaccine schedules. As we plan for future phases of the pandemic, we must remember that COVID-19 is still a real threat that places a greater burden on the poor and the most vulnerable. Our wins against COVID-19 show us what is possible when we work together 
And when we use the tools that we know are effective, they also highlight where there are still gaps and where we can do things better. These lessons are key to improving our COVID response and tackling other health and development challenges to build a healthier, stronger, more resilient region together. And finally, a downward revision of the International Monetary Fund's global growth projections is expected next month with the release of the World Economic Outlook. Word of this from the IMF's Managing Director, Kristalina Georgieva, who said that the unprecedented sanctions imposed on Russia will be felt across the global economy and financial markets with significant spillovers to other countries. The economic fallout of the war is being transmitted through three key channels. First and most impactful, higher commodity prices. Second, impact on reducing real income because also of inflation and how that reflects in the real economy. And three, the impact on financial conditions and business confidence. So let me elaborate a bit on these three transmission channels. The surging prices for energy and other commodities with corn, metals, inputs for fertilizers, semiconductors, uh, they are uh, coming in many countries on top of already high inflation and uh, are causing uh, grave concern. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.